These days, life just seems to be getting busier. My way of hitting the pause button? Getting into the great outdoors. And spending quality time with friends. The new smell. You've survived. Are you looking forward to your trip away? It's Faye Toza from Steps. Weirdly, how are you, love? <laughs> and family. Oh, look at this, sisters. Get it! So it is a working live viaduct, because there's the train. <laughs> this is one of the best ways I know. It's all to relax <laughs> and recharge. Mm. Lemon drizzle. Bake well. So join me and my pals. I could honestly do this all day. As we enjoy the beauty. This is brilliant. Of the landscapes on my doorstep. Hansel and Gretel in the woods. Give me some coaching, Tanny. You're doing really well. And further afield. Have you had lunch on a lock? Cheers. Finding new ways. <laughs> I'm a cockerel and I've laid an egg. <laughs> to raise our spirits. Welcome to yoga with gourds. <laughs> Chocolate. That's amazing. To enrich the mind. It's so good to zone out. Body. This is my audition for Bond. And so. That took me to a lot of different places, you know? Thank you for the most marvellous weekend. This two-day getaway is going to be extra special because I'll be spending it with someone who's probably the main reason I'm an actor. If it wasn't for him and his ilk, I probably wouldn't have a career in theatre and television. And he just happens to be one of the nicest blokes on the planet. He gave an iconic performance as the character Neville in that fantastic series, Alfida's In Pet, and then went on to entertain millions in Inspector Morse and Lewis. Yeah, today I'm teaming up with actor and good friend, Kevin Wadley. While Kevin grew up in the Northeast, he now lives down south, but he's often back in the region to visit friends and family. So I'm on my way to pick him up and whisk him off for a day of fun, away from it all. You all right, bunny lad? Oh, herbs and green as Weirdly, I live and how are you, lad? I'm very good indeed. Good to see you. <laughs> Would you like to spend a day with me and reconnect with your northeastern roots? I'd love to, but can I finish my tea first? No, how are you? Time's money. How are you, man? Treat me gently. <laughs> you all right? Oh, yeah. You all right? <laughs> Our first destination is on the coast about a 45-minute drive away. So, where did you grow up, Kevin? In Cumberland, in Brampton, and we moved over to North Tyne Valley when I was four. My dad was at sea, so my mother's cousins all lived in Hexham, so we moved up to that area so that she had some support. So when it came to holidays for you as a kid growing up in the northeast, would you be traveling Locally, we rented a place in Banbury, usually with uh, my dad's pal, my uncle Bill, and his family. And we'd rent a place in right in the middle of Banbury, one of these old Victorian gaffs, and all piling there. And I just loved it. It's still my favourite place in the world, Banbury. Well, Banbury's not on the schedule this time, but we're going just a few miles down the coast from there. So I hope Kevin will love it just as much. Did you build sandcastles as a kid? What were you building well, in the sand? I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I used to build moats and yeah, let the seawater come in. Come in, yeah, of yeah. course. We had a dog when I was a kid that always used to jump all over your sandcastle before you got it built. So when you were at school, were you good at art? Well, I did A-level art. Did you? Was yeah. that sculpting, painting, drawing? No, it was painting. Have you ever painted in the sand? Not ever. Well, we're going to meet a lovely lady who puts her heart and soul into the sand. Excellent. If you're into beach art, there can't be many better canvases to use than this unspoiled, dune-backed stretch at Almouth. And it's obviously a favourite for artist Claire, who's left her job as a clinician in the Midlands to come back to the northeast. Look at this. Claire, how Hello. are you? I'm good. Robson. Hello. Nice to see you. 
and she's now turning her passion for sand art into group sessions in a bid to share the positive feelings they create. What time did you start? Five o'clock. Away. You started at five. Yeah. What time did you get up? Three o'clock. Yeah. You need to know what time low tide is, and then I start a couple of hours before that. But the nice thing is I get to see the sun come up. So, Lovely. Can we give you a hand to finish off this masterpiece? I would love it. I've got a couple of rakes over here if you would like to step this way. Great. Having been up with the larks, Claire's already mapped out a couple of birds for us to decorate. It really is just a question of making light scratches and then just to scratch over the Great other stuff. side. And right. So you're making a kind of biscuity crumble sort of texture. A biscuity crumble on Almouth Beach. But mm. this is just colouring in. How are yeah, How are man? You did A-level art. You're going to be shading <laughs> here, there, well, everywhere. Be <laughs> That's it. It's looking lovely. Really nice. You've got that lovely crumbly texture. So, Claire, tell me, have you always been into art? Well, I used to be a GP for 30 years, so I saw an awful lot of stress and the impact of stress on people's lives. And discovering this, it's a kind of antidote to stress. I've always found it really, really relaxing. And you find that you concentrate on what you're doing, so you lose whatever weight is on your mind. It's pure escapism. Yeah. So, obviously, in the not-too-distant future, the tide's going to come and take this all away. Yes. Is that all part of the experience? It is. I think, like everything in life, there's an impermanence to everything. And so learning just to enjoy it in the moment and then to let go is quite a useful thing. Well, I've never known Kevin Waitley to be this quiet. So beach art, for him, is obviously doing the trick. Oh, Kevin, you're doing a fantastic job. It's one of those things, isn't it? Just making a mark. You see it with kids. They love making a mark, whether it's on paper or scratching on the table or building a little pile of stones, you know, on the top of a hill. It's just a, an, a human thing, isn't it? For me, this is a bit like finding your inner ten-year-old. I suppose for oldies like me, it's, it's a nice little bit of exercise and fresh air and great, yeah. It's really freeing to be working on such a huge scale and to know you can add any effects or flourishes you fancy. And then the next step is to step on it, to do a little dance, to make the speckles. Yeah, hot. Well, when it comes to a bit of fancy footwork, me and Kev don't need asking twice. Lovely little tip for <laughs> All in the name of art. I we missed my vocation, yeah. <laughs> and then going around the back of his head. up to the top as well. Oh, that's lovely. It is. Just in time for the tide as Look well. Look at that, the tide's coming. Perfect yeah. timing. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah. And while Claire's art is really impressive at ground level, it's from the air that you get the full impact of her beautiful designs. Claire, uh -huh. so lovely. lovely. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you as well. Thanks, Claire. <laughs> That's given me a real boost Thank to my much. mood. Don't know about you, Mr. Waitley. Absolutely. Well, listen, if you thought that was good, well, you see I've got lined up for you next. Claire's right. There's something really poignant about making art that the waves wash away. And our next activity, just along the beach, is also at the mercy of the tide. But this one requires oars instead of rakes. So when was the last time you did any rowing? You know, when you were on Morse, all those <laughs> rowing scenes on the tent. No, there are a lot of, of uh, boat club scenes, but none of me in a boat. <laughs> the Almouth Community Rowing Club not only loves to get people on the water, but they've even built their own boat. Now, look at these. These are beautiful. Rhoda. Hi, Robson. Robson. Nice to see you. Good to see Lovely you. Lovely to see you. Hi, Rhoda. Kevin? And today, the club's coxswain, Rhoda, and her crew, Peter and Dean, are taking us out to sea. So, what's the plan for today, Rhoda? The plan is to take this skiff out into Almouth Bay, do a bit of rowing, and see if we can convert you to skiff rowing. Right. Try not to drown, huh? No, we'll take good care of you. Let's get her in the water, then. Go on! Go on. 
So tell me more about the Almouth Community Rowing Club, Rhoda. Well, it's for the community. We're not a bunch of specialist rowers. We're... How many people do it? Uh, we've got about 65 members oh, yeah. at the moment. Wow. Yeah. And the fact that you've built this vessel yourself, does that make the row that much more pleasurable? The satisfaction of having built something that you're then taking out to sea is great. There's usually a crew of five on a skiff like this. So here are your life jackets. And I'm hoping Peter and Dean won't have to compensate for us beginners too much. So let's get the boat in the water. Because reaching the shallows is a challenge in itself. OK, keep going. So what is my position called? Bow rua. Bowing. Wave coming. Until our lesson begins, Peter and Dean are taking the strain. Make ready. Pull. And it's not long before we're on our way. I think we should just let Peter and Dean Yeah, play. I think it's going great. Yeah, we're flying. Easy. OK, right, let's get you two going. Now, remember the three commands, make ready. That's where you come forward with your arms straight. Pull, you put the blade in the water. Yeah. Keep your arms straight, sit up. Then bend your arms, push down. If you want to stop, tell me, otherwise I will call easy for everyone to stop. Right, OK. Make ready. Pull. Welcome to the world of coastal rowing. I love it. Well, I have to say, you're doing really well. We are, aren't we? <laughs> Did you hear that, Kevin? Yeah. We're doing really well. I didn't believe it. You're rowing in time. You're coping with the chop. Surprised once you get into the rhythm at how nice and easy it is. I think we've got two new recruits here. <laughs> yeah. We've got some speed on here, Waitley. So is this something for all ages, Rhoda? You've just got to be big enough to hold an oar. Yeah. I think the youngest rower we ever had was 12, and our oldest rower was 86. Well, we could bob about in Almouth Bay all day, but it's time to head back. Now, can you pick up a little bit of speed? So row a little bit harder. That's good. Keep going. About 50 yards to go. Keep rowing. Come on. I can see the line ahead of us. And easy. Now then, get hold of your oars and up vertically. That's it. And lay it in the boat. All lying the same way, yeah? Yeah. Right, I have to say, well done. Well done, you. Yeah. Well done. Good work, Kevin. Right. Cheers, buddy. That was Cheers. awesome. Good. One, two, three, heave. I always love the sense of space you get when you experience a place from the sea. Did you enjoy that rowing? I did. I, it was surprisingly nice, wasn't it? It was. I liked it when she kept saying easy and you took the oars out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> We're heading north now towards Chat Hill, and I can't think of a better way to spend the drive than talking about the breakthroughs Kevin made as an actor from the northeast. I don't know if you're aware of the impact you had on so many of us growing up in the area because you actually opened the door for us and gave us confidence and hope that we could do what you're doing and potentially make a living out of it. I think we were probably the last generation of, of, of uh, oh, you've got to lose that accent. It was the same actually meeting Jimmy Nail because we were all doing sort of uh, watered down northeast accents, but our director on our feeders and pet Roger Bamford said, go for it, to Jim. And he just used his his Wall's End accent and that energised it like nothing else. It was great. We all wanted to be in it, you know, and everybody wanted to play Oz. I mean, it was one of the funniest shows, but you had that beautiful hybrid. You had that hybrid of 
funny, sad pathos. Bottom line, just pure entertainment. So I read that you like your music and you were in a band. Were you in a folk band? Were you in a rock band? An R&B band and a folk duo. What was your instrument of choice? I was the vocalist in both. How's your lungs these days? Deflated, I would say, because you've got to keep using them, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what I've got planned for you this afternoon, you're going to need to inflate your lungs, Kevin. You're going to need plenty of puff for what I've got in store. Oh, I can do puff, darling. Project to the back there, Waitley. <laughs> <laughs> Our destination is my accommodation for the night, in Tuggle. But before I drop off my bags, I've arranged for us to meet somebody who knows all about the benefits music can have on your mood. Hi, Robson. Hi, Robson. Nice to Kevin, see you. Hi, yeah. hi, Teacher and award-winning piper Ian Gelston has been playing the border pipes for about a decade. Can I ask what was that tune called? That was Ellingham Hall, Ellingham which Hall. is literally just up the road from over the hills and far away. Yeah. These are the border pipes, yeah. They are. Yeah. And what what makes them different to say the Northumbrian pipes and obviously the bagpipes? Well, they're different from the Northumbrian small pipes. Mm -hmm because they're bigger. <laughs> <laughs> bigger and they haven't got a closed end, so the end on the small pipes is closed. Right. This one's open like the Scottish pipes, um, so they're a bit louder. It's, it's very sweet, isn't it? It's, it's not overpowering like the bagpipes. Bag I, I love the bagpipes. Yeah. It's partly because the, the bellows blown. You don't need not as big. strong reeds. And is it true this sound is good for mental well-being? I'm doing some playing for a dementia group is that right? in a couple of weeks. A lot of the time, people remember their childhood dances, they did Cayley dancing at school, and it's bringing that back to them. It's such a joy. You have an audience who absolutely love it because they're being transported back. Well, I think we're in pretty good shape to give the border pipes a go. We'll give it a whirl. Yeah. Shall we get you set up? I'd love to get set up. The instrument consists of three drums, which deliver a constant harmony and a chanter with finger holes that provides the tune. You want that under your left arm? I see. I what, you nearly put me are you, man, with your chanter? <laughs> <laughs> so this, this bellow here fills up that... Fills the bag, so it does the job the of your lungs. OK, so um, no blowing involved at all. No. So if you want to keep going with the bellows and try and fill the bag up... Go on, you can do it, Kev. Oof. I'd get that scene too, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so just, hey, just, boy, let, just let that drop. Flap, I... Let them pop. Sound. Haunting, Kevin. It's a it's haunting like a, sound. A cow with pleurisy. Not so much sweet at the moment, more disturbing. <laughs> but you'll get there. <laughs> Come on, Actually, that's pretty good ah. for a first go. Want is your fingers round here and you feel the holes. Oh, do I? <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, is uh, it? Well, I'm glad I got the drone, but I never. I'm got glad you went well, first. <laughs> <laughs> it might not have been that melodic. Just getting the drone is three, four months' work. Is it? Oh, all right. But Kev yeah. seems to be a natural. All right. So get that bag tucked right under your left arm. I've spilt it from the bag up, and I'm now going to squeeze the <laughs> draw. Oh! <laughs> I'm not being well. I had cabbage. <laughs> Hang on. Keep going. Yeah. OK, I'll keep my fingers off there. there we go. Just let that one go now. What? You let that go. Just let it go? Yeah. But keep... I think we should leave it to the experts. I think we should. Go on, give us another one of your favourite scenes. I've had a great time with Kev today and we've packed loads in, meeting lovely people and catching up in the great outdoors. 
So, have you had a lovely day, love? I've had a beautiful day, son. It's been an absolute pleasure. Beautiful. But now it's time for Kerb to travel back to his family with some new tales to tell and for me to check into my lodgings. Just a few miles from the sea, this site of three contemporary cabins is nestled into an area of outstanding natural beauty. So this is my digs for the night. They told me it was a hut in the middle of nowhere. But this is more a chalet stroke mansion in the middle of nowhere. And the man responsible for bringing minimalist design into the heart of this part of the countryside is Wim Stevenson. Wow, I told I was staying in a hut at Trees at Tuggle, but you can't call these huts. Are they, are they cabins or chalets? Yeah, okay. cabins, I think, yeah. Cabins, yeah. beautiful cabin. Thank in you very a much. Beautiful location. Can I have a look around? Absolutely, come on in. Each of the three cabins is named after the trees that are close by. So tonight, I'm staying in Ash. So what inspired the design, Wim? Mountain bothies, Scandinavian design, even the fishing huts the dot along the coast. Bit of everything, really. I've stayed in some fishing huts, but never one like this. <laughs> I've stayed in a lot of them. But I get what you're saying. And I suspect the big windows are deliberate, yeah? Yeah, very much so. So really sort of framing views, welcoming the outdoors in. I mean, it does take you back to camping, doesn't it? You are indoors, but you are in the outdoors yeah. as well. What I also like is you've got this kind of expanding effect, the way it just arrows out. Absolutely, yes, and spaces were designed so as you move through them, you're thrust into the outdoors. Wim has combined clean lines with a luxurious interior so well. Nice shower. What is there not to like? <sighs> Slumming it again. Ah. And with the weather rolling in from the sea, what better place to stay than in a cosy cabin deep in the countryside? It's day two of my weekend escape along the Northumberland coast. And after a bit of a hectic day yesterday, I'm enjoying a slow start to my morning. I love this place. I slept really, really well. And I guess that's because in a place and setting like this, you're surrounded by that. Solitude. And this series is all about making memories. And before I go home, I shall be making another one out of Willow with a lovely lady called Ruth. And I don't have to travel far because Ruth shall be traveling to me. Ruth is a fellow nature lover. So much so she's made a career out of the outdoors because Ruth is an artist who creates sculptures that sit in the landscape made from natural materials like Willow. She also runs willow weaving courses for beginners like me. And because I love bird watching, Ruth is going to teach me how to make a bird feeder. Ruth, you're not going to believe this. I've just been talking about you. You're all right. Yes, yeah, thank you. On this beautiful, fresh Northumbrian morning. So then, Ruth, where do we start? Yeah, so we right. need six pieces of willow. Uh -huh. And what we do is we basically put them in these smaller holes around uh -huh. the circle. Right. So if you put the butt ends in each one of these smaller do. holes. Now, Ruth, tell me, where do you actually get your willow from? Well, I mostly grow it myself in a field, a boggy part of a farmer's field. Mm -hmm. you, you cut it and then just store it in a place where it's not going to go mouldy, so sort of out of the sun and the wind, but with plenty of draft blown through. I'll just show you what we do here. First of all, we form a pentagon shape, five-sided shape, so each okay. one of these has to bend slightly inside the next one. If we keep turning it around, we make our pentagon shape. See this last one, oh, yeah. we bend it over, it has to go just inside this one. So just it's underneath that Well, no, it's just like, not on top of it, but just slightly inside. And then we just repeat yes, the process yes, again. You bend it up Watch quite it sharply, so you've got a nice elbow, and then bring it down just inside. That's right. So if you pick the outside one up at a nice sharp oh, angle, sorry. and then push it just inside that one. And that's right, and, and then, then that one comes that one up. up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh I, think I didn't we'll like the sound of that. I think we'll probably be all right. I didn't like right. the sound of that, Ruth. I didn't. Well, I'm so sorry. I don't think it's gone all the way through. I think we'll be all right. What is it about this process that you like the most? 
kind of get lost in the work. It's a sort of meditative thing almost sometimes. I discovered I was autistic when I was nearly 50, and it was almost by accident because our daughter was having problems at school, and I sort of said to my husband, well, we could be on the spectrum, and I chose to follow it up. And since then, I've found it quite helpful. I'm not frightened of telling people, you know, I um, suffer from sensory overload and I have a slow processing speed. It's quite hard to kind of keep up with conversations sometimes because people tend to jump around and they're just sort of enjoying the conversation. But for me, it's like I'm trying to keep up. And when discussing your autism, do you find there are certain things that are helpful or unhelpful when you talk about it? Sadly, some people, if I say I'm autistic, they suddenly sort of talk, talk start talking very slowly to me as if I'm an idiot, you know, and obviously <laughs> people on the spectrum are often of average or above average intelligence. Um, it's hard to describe when you, you obviously don't look any different from anybody else. And I guess doing something like this, surrounded by solitude, really helps. Oh, it does. It's like a lot of craft. It's quite therapeutic, really. And especially in a setting like this. Is being outdoors an important part of it for you? Oh, yeah, definitely. I much prefer to work outdoors, yeah. Am I doing this right? Yeah. So make that nice elbow shape and then just inside that one. I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult yeah, than this, yeah. so I guess yeah. this is something mm. everyone can do, yeah? Yeah, I've actually taught quite young children how to do this. Before. I think it's lovely to see people being happy when they manage to create something and they're so proud of it. That is so great. Look at the spirals we've created here. Right, do you want to help me pull this? Oh, yes, OK. <laughs> and um, if you'd like to trim those off just slightly, we're going to put a handle on it. That's very neat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so this little bit has to sort of just tuck in, find a little gap for it to go in. That's it. And then we can bend it up and we look opposite and we come through here so you'll get a nice curve. That's brilliant. And then this bit wraps round the handle we've just created. Yeah. And then if can you sort of weave it under there? You know what I found about doing something like this, Ruth? You actually get lost in it, don't you? Yes. Everything else just disappears. Yeah. yeah. It just takes your heart rate down, doesn't it? Definitely, yes. You stop worrying about things. It's amazing. Ruth. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> This is bird seed with lard, and then we Birds can put it into, lard, the, into the bird feeder. Okay. So we push it in so like this. Do that one. If you, do you want to fill it up? Yeah. My mum comes to my house a lot and sits in the conservatory and watches the birds feed. We've got bullfinch, oh, greenfinch, goldfinch. Just need to hang them up in the trees now. Oh, yeah. How good is that? We really have created a memory today, so when I see the birds feeding from this, I remember where I was, what I was doing, and who I was with. I was with the lovely Ruth Thompson. Ruth, I've had a fabulous day. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'd like to give you a willow star. Oh, thank you yes. so much. But you're the real star. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. Hand on heart, I have loved every second of my weekend away, and I shall treasure every minute spent with my acting hero, Kevin Whiteley. And it was a dream being alongside Ruth, feeling her love for the outdoors, and all that is good about the natural world. And what did the birds in my garden think of their new feeders? It's clearly a thumbs up.